Hi, everyone. It's Michelle, and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. First off, I want to say a huge thank you to all of you for being so kind and sweet and supportive of me on my channel. It really, really means a lot. And that is why I'm continuing on YouTube because I love my RDT community. Y'all are amazing. So thank you. And thank you to all of the new people who signed up on my Patreon. I really appreciate it. And for all of you who've left me a donation, I again, extremely appreciate it. To be honest, I really didn't expect anything, but everyone who has been kind in the comments and telling me to keep going and that they love my channel. It really, really helped me to keep going, guys, because it's been extremely tough over the past week. So I do appreciate your ongoing support. Now, with that being said, we have a lot of royalty to get into today. So sit back and relax, grab yourself a beverage, and let's get into the Royal Daily Tea. Hey everyone, so it appears that Valentine Lowe is actually writing a book. I know there's been a lot of back and forth on my channel. I had initially reported about a week or so ago that he was writing a book, and then it came out that he wasn't writing a book, but in fact, he is writing a book. Now, the thing that's going to be extremely interesting about this book is one, it's going to be released on the 29th of September, which is kind of getting into the fall season pretty close to when Prince Harry supposedly is going to be releasing his much anticipated memoir. He's releasing it sometime this fall, probably between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So not only does Prince Harry have to worry about what's coming out in this book by Mr. Valentine, he also has to worry about what has been said in Tom Bauer's book. And then we know that Michelle Obama is also releasing a book around the same time. I almost feel like do Harry and Meghan piss off their PR firm, their staff, because they really are setting him up for failure. It's like failure after failure after failure. Again, he's going to have a lot of competition to sell his book with this new book that is dropping. So the interesting thing about this book is Mr. Lowe is focusing on the courtiers or the courtiers, the people behind the scenes, the infamous men in gray that Princess Diana talked about. It's the people who work behind the scenes with the royals. So if you're a big a fan of royal fiction, you get to hear about court life, you know, all the politics that go on behind the scenes and how the royals have favors and certain people that they have around them on their court to advise them. A lot of people in the royal family have advisors, they have staff, because it's not a, you know, dictatorship, it's a constitutional monarchy, where they have people who are a trust advisors who help ensure that the monarchy and the institution runs correctly. And so this book is focusing on the people who were basically faceless, people who were behind the scenes who might have some power over the royals, over the decisions that are made. Again, this could be very damaging for Harry and Meghan because we know Harry and Meghan blamed the quote-unquote men in gray, the secret courtiers, for keeping him away from his granny. There was an incident where he was going to go and visit the queen. He had talked to the queen on the phone, and then ultimately they were told, oh, the queen's busy. She's going to be busy all week. You can't come and visit us. And he talked about that on the Oprah Winfrey interview. And, of course, we all know that Prince Harry and the queen's private secretary are not exactly besties. We know that he is part of the RAVAC uh, committee, which helped block Harry from getting his security, in which he is now suing the Home Office. Now, Valentine Lowe is a journalist who has been following the Royals for over 25 years. He is the one who broke the story on the Boolean allegations. So now he's bringing forth a brand new book that is going to kind of expose what is happening with the royals behind the scenes? And is it going to blow open a lot of claims that Harry is making? 
or is it going to prove his point about the infamous men in gray? So I'm going to read to you a little bit of excerpt from the book that's going to explain to you in detail what his book is going to cover. It says, throughout history, the British monarchy has relied on its courtiers, the trusted advisors of, in the king and queen's inner circle, to ensure its survival as a family, an ancient institution, and a pillar of the Constitution. Today, as ever, a vast team of people hidden from you steers the royal family's path between public duty and private life. The queen, after a remarkable 70 years of service, is entering the final seasons of her reign without her husband, Philip, to guide her. Meanwhile, Charles seeks to define what his future as king will be, with his court wielding ever greater influence as he plans for his eminent accession. The question of who is entrusted to guide the royals has never been more vital, and yet the task those courtiers face has never been more challenging. With a cloud hanging over Prince Andrew as well as Harry and Meghan's departure, from royal life, the complex relationship between modern courtiers and royal principles has been exposed to global scrutiny. William and Kate, equipped with a very 21st century approach to press and public relations, now hold the responsibility of making an ancient institution relevant for the decades to come. Courtiers reveals an ever-changing system of complex characters, shifting values and ideals over what the future of the institution should be. This is the story of how the monarchy really works at a pivotal moment in its history. So this is going to be a very fascinating story that they're basically getting a voice. You know, the faceless men in gray are finally speaking with a person who's going to kind of expose what is happening behind the scenes. Now, Valentine Lowe says, I've spent years watching the public face the royal family presents to the world, but I've also seen the influence of the hidden advisors who help make the monarchy what it is today. As we head towards the end of the Queen's long and illustrious reign, this book will answer the question, who really runs the show, who sets the agenda, and what happens next. So I think this is going to be an amazing book. It's going to be a bombshell book, and it's kind of going to blow the lid off what is happening behind the scenes with the royals. So there's a story that came out that Meghan Markle is extremely bitter over her failure to create a woke royal family. And I have to say I agree with this um, claim because we know that when Meghan joined the royal family, she had ideals that she was going to come in and turn it into the Meghan Markle show, that she was Princess Diana 2.0, that her and Harry were the new royals. They had that Diana magic, and they were going to come in and wipe you know, William and Catherine off their pedestal and let everyone know that they were the new royals, they were the popular ones, that they were going to make it more woke, more politicized. But Megan clearly did not do her homework. As we've said before, she had no intention of listening to the advisors that were given to her by Her Majesty the Queen. She didn't want to hear from Kate. She had no time for her. Megan didn't care about the traditions and the rules and the etiquette of the royal family. She thought she was going to come in there and make it very modern. Now we know that William and Catherine are definitely bringing a breath of fresh air to the royal family and to the institution. They are modernizing certain aspects, how they are communicating with the people, how they're more down to earth, where people can hug them, take selfies with them, how they're definitely utilizing modern technology like Zoom and social media. Because as we approach the future, people want to have royals that are more approachable, that are seen more like them. They no longer want the stiff royals that are very mechanical that sit behind the plexiglass and just wave with their little white gloves on people want to be able to relate to them on a certain level and so Charles has been very smart for many many years realizing that after his mother passes away the need for all of the pomp and circumstance and the money people don't want to see all of that 
So he's definitely been working to make the royal family smaller by reducing the titles, by reducing the working royals. He's definitely been working on that for many, many years. And William and Catherine are also utilizing the fact that they're very likable. They have children. They can relate to a lot of people. And they relate to the younger crowd, which is very, very important. Megan thought she was going to make it the Hollywood Instagram version of wokeness. Again, where she walks up with the camera crew, people greet her, she waves, and she leaves. She didn't realize that the real royals actually dedicate their lives to service, that it's not super glamorous, that they actually do some work. Yes, they have wardrobes. Yes, they have palaces. Yes, they have staff. But in order to have that life of privilege, you live a life of of service. And Megan has famously said she doesn't want to be a civil servant in a tiara. She wants to be the Instagram duchess, the woke activist, which you cannot be as a working royal. It's a contradiction. But again, Megan didn't want to listen to any advice. She was Megan from Suits. She walked in there. She had an agenda. Now, it is said that Megan is very, very bitter that the royal family was not, you know, like, yes, Megan, we're going to do everything that you say, Megan, that they pretty much shut her down and told her this is the rules. This is how it's going to be done. You're going to walk behind your husband. He is the royal. You're going to walk behind Kate because she's higher up the food chain than you are. And we all know Megan doesn't like to be put in her place. Megan wants to be number one, and the old what Megan wants, Megan gets. So Megan clashed culturally immediately with the royal family because she was treating the royals like they were Hollywood. Like, I'm a star, get me my Diet Coke, do for me, get me my freebies, but that's not how the royals work. They treat their staff with respect. They follow rules and traditions and guidelines. And as you've seen in plenty of video clips, Megan was always pushing herself ahead of her husband. She was handling him, kind of making him look like a child. And honestly, it was cringeworthy to watch how she manhandles her husband, who is the royal. If you watch videos of William and Kate, even if Kate gets out of the car first, she will wait for William to come around and he will be the first person to shake the hand. She knows her place, even though she's a future queen. Kate has respect for her husband and for his role as king. That is why their relationship works. They're always very, very in sync with one another, but she knows that her husband is the main royal, and even Camilla, even as she arrives first, she always lets Charles make the first step. It is not demeaning. It is meant to be respectful and that he is the king, and that she knows her place as the queen. But Megan would literally tap Harry and push herself forward. She would interject. She would, you know, claw him and tell him it's time to go. It's very, very unladylike and very, very unroyal. Like I said, Megan definitely appears, in my opinion, to be a very bitter person. The way she's always trying to upstage the senior royals with her announcements, just like they announced that they are coming back to the UK on Princess Anne's birthday. That is not a coinky dink. That is not a oopsie. We made a mistake. That was planned. Megan is very, very jealous. She's very bitter. She doesn't like the other royals to get positive press. But I found it hilarious that on her birthday, they put Kate on the cover of People. I think their time is up. I think their star power has definitely faded and that people are getting sick of them and their wokeness. So now they're traveling back to the UK to visit charities that are close to their heart. But the hilarious thing is, again, the timing is off. Again, I really think there's someone in their PR firm who's pissed at them. Why would you schedule a visit during the time where a new prime minister is going into office, where William is at Earthshot speaking at the UN 
and Her Majesty the Queen is at Balmoral. It, it's odd. The timing is, again, very odd. Megan is very, very bitter. We know they have to get that footage for Netflix because, let's be honest, the Jubilee was kind of a bust. So I just find it very, very suspicious, their timing of everything. And I do believe that Megan is bitter, that the royal family didn't listen to her, that they didn't take her advice. And so she left to create her alternate royal family in America. Harry and Meghan are literally acting like they're the new royals of America, which is a joke. And I've said this before. I can put on a tiara and go to Walmart. That don't make me a princess. So calling yourself the Duke and Duchess of Sussex in Montecito is irrelevant. It's a joke. You are Harry and Meghan Windsor, as far as I'm concerned, because you are no longer a working royal. You do not represent the crown or the commonwealth. So, again, in my opinion, I do believe that Harry and Meghan still feel that they're working royals and they're creating this new alternate royal family, but it's really making them look like a joke. I think people in America are finally waking up. They're no longer drinking the Sussex Kool-Aid, as you will. Like I said, the mighty have fallen because the tabloids in America, you know, those things that Megan never heard or saw before that have been around since like the 80s, uh, are definitely starting to paint Harry and Megan as a joke. They're not getting the positive press pieces that they used to get. Now, People Magazine still puts out those pieces because we all know Sunshine Sacks pays for those stories to be put out of Megan saving those kittens and children from burning buildings and the little meat cutes on the street. And we know it's going to be real cute with Megan and the children in the UK because she cares, right? She really cares because the camera's there, y'all. She cares. She's getting photographed. She cares for that Netflix paycheck is more what she cares about. But yeah, Megan cares. You know, Sunshine Sacks working overtime trying to get that, that positive press and PR for Netflix. But again, a lot of people in America are no longer drinking the Kool-Aid. Okay? The mighty have fallen. Wokeness is so 2021. And we're getting into 2023 pretty soon. I think people here have had their fill. And Harry and Meghan, I think, are going to have a very interesting and turbulent 2023. Because let's be honest, 2022 wasn't great, and I think it's going to be even harder in 2023. Now, we're all still, you know, wondering what's going to happen in Harry's memoir. There could be some blockbuster bombshells. Again, I don't think there's going to be a huge amount of, of bombshells, but I'm sure he's going to talk about his genetic pain and his wokeness and how Megan helped him ride a bike and wipe his butt. But there could be some juicy stuff in there because, let's be honest, the man needs to sell the hell out of these books. Because if this book tanks, that could jeopardize his contract with Penguin Random House, and he has a four-book deal. So we all know there's that one book that's not going to come out until Her Majesty passes away, but he has to bring the goods. So I'm on the fence of what he's going to talk about in the book. It's probably going to be his genetic pain and how Charles was a horrible parent and his childhood and then how Megan saved him. But as far as the racism claim that was talked about in the Oprah Winfrey interview, I don't think he's going to name that person because if he names that person... In my opinion, that is the going to be the final nail in the coffin for these Sussexes. I think they will definitely lose their titles at that point. But who knows? He has Megan and her team of people around him. But again, it's going to be a very woke book with some secrets. But I don't think it's going to be a slam fest. Do you think that Harry and Megan are trying to create an alternate royal family in America because it definitely appears like they think they're working royals. They act like they're working royals and they're doing these royal tours in America. But that's all I have for you today.
Thank you all so much for tuning in to the Royal Daily Tea. Leave me your comments below. Do you plan to buy Valentine Lowe's book, The Courtiers? And do you think Harry and Meghan are trying to set up an alternative royal family in the United States? Fun fact, I won Employee of the Month, kind of, at my job, and they gave me a $5 Amazon card. Now, look, I am... You know, I'm really grateful for the $5 Amazon card. I have no idea what I can buy for $5 on Amazon. If you have any cute ideas of what I can spend my $5 on, leave it in the comment below. But what can you get for $3 a month? Well, you can become an RDT VIP Patreon member. The link will be down below. As a patron of my channel, you will get one new video a week from me, as well as monthly lives a chance to be in a monthly um, sweepstakes, as well as we're going to talk about more personal vlog style videos. You get to know more about me. We'll talk about movies, food, decorating, the royals, maybe books, conspiracy theories. I mean, the sky is the limit. Anything that we pretty much don't discuss here on YouTube, we can definitely do on the Patreon account, but it's going to be more of a personalized vlog style video. So let me know if you are a patron, if you plan to become a patron, what kind of content you would like to see over there. But for $3 a month, guys, you pretty much can't get anything for $3. You can't even get anything for $5. Again, I have no clue what to get on Amazon for $5. But y'all, I'm grateful to have the five bucks, you know? So let me know what you think I should spend my money on. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for tuning in to the Royal Daily Tea. And remember, my new filming schedule is going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, starting next week. So I will see y'all on Monday. Bye, guys.